morning. It's a cold Saturday morning and I just wanted to go over the questions that some people posted in their uh, the exam survey that I put out for things that you wanted to know. Um, I apologize ahead of time if my puggy starts barking. She's in a, in a mood. Um, so these are in random order, just kind of how I receive them. Although I did save the specific questions to the end, these are so the more general questions at the beginning. So somebody asked if they found a different Z table somewhere else that they liked better. Can they use that? Yes. So if you have um, uh, the book Z table, any Z table, they should give you all the same answers. If you're finding we're getting different answers, that means you're using one of them wrong. It may be that you're using mine wrong, um, but all of the Z tables should give you the exact same answer. So you can use any Z table you want but you need to print it. So you can't have a digital copy of anything. So make sure that if you're using a different Z table that you have it printed and ready to go. So someone asked if during the test, are we going to, um, am I gonna have the Z table available for you? So I have it in the directions that you can print it before you start. Um, so it is there for you, but it, it won't be presented during the test. You have to have it available to you. So make sure you get that printed um, before the test. Um, somebody asked about printed notes, which kinds of notes are okay. Here's the deal. You can use any printed material you want during the test. It could be five different textbooks. It could be your friend's notes, your notes. I, I don't care what the content is of the hard copy material that you have. You just, my only thing is you can't use digital devices. So you can't use another browser. You can't go online. You can't use your cell phone. You can't use an iPad. Everything has to be hard copy. So if um, you have uh, the inability to print, then I recommend that you keep notes or that you do something that written hard copy that you can use during the test. And I've kind of made that clear early on. So uh, I don't think any of you are really gonna be spending a lot of hours kind of transposing because I, in my earlier videos, I did kind of make a point of that, that you won't be able to use any digital devices. It'll all have to be hard copy but I don't care what hard copy it is. It could be anything that you find helpful. Maybe a, a note from your mom. You're gonna do it. Um, that's fine. All right. Um, somebody asked about accommodations. So uh, if you have accommodations, I probably should have already heard from you. Um, and so if that's the case, then I've already made whatever adjustments are needed. If you haven't reached out to me one-on-one, -on -one, because um, again, this survey is anonymous, so I have no idea who asked that question. Um, but if you haven't reached out to me, it's getting really late. And uh, so you need to reach out to me ASAP. Um, and I do require that we go through the DSPS accommodation form. So uh, if you have any questions about accommodations, please reach out to me so we can get that ball rolling. Somebody asked how I'm going to test on JASP. So I'm not going to ask you to use JASP during the test. Um, couple different reasons. One is we all saw what happens in the practice exam. If you go off screen, it kind of yells at you. So if you're going to use the program, it would probably have a problem or some of you are using the browser version and I've locked the browser. So the way I'm going to test on JASP is I'm going to send, uh, give you screenshots. And that way um, I can say, here's a screenshot and then a different screenshot and a different screenshot, which is the one that you need to run this analysis or that kind of thing. So um, my questions about JASP will be screenshot so you don't have to run it but if you've done it if you've run it in the past it should be familiar to you what the answer is so that's to take some of the drama fear away about jasp um i did see there was a question about previous versions of jasp so all versions of jasp will work fine for this test um, you'll notice that the newer versions have a slightly different look maybe they offer some more things to click on but the things I'm interested in for this class are going to be common across all versions of JASP. So don't worry if you had to download an old version of JASP to work on your computer. That'll work just fine and you'll be familiar with uh, what I'm looking for. Um, so somebody asked if I could go over homework. A couple of people said, you know, certain different numbers. So I'm going to ask you to do two things if you had questions on the homework. First, go back and look. Um, I don't know if all the students are aware of the fact that there's feedback in there. So if you go back and look, I give feedback for almost every answer. Um, so you may already have the help you need to get the um, to get it to click. If that isn't there and you need more, um, then I ask that you come to my office hours um, or reach out to me because um, there's so many random collection of um, 
uh, of questions. It would take a really long video to go through all of them, but I would be very happy to go through them with you uh, once you've already looked at the feedback and we have some more directed questions. Okay, Cookie, let's do the next one. Somebody asked about Excel. Um, okay, I just picked up Cookie. I would like to introduce you to my, my crazy Cookie Monster. Here she's the one barking. Okay, so back to what we were doing. Someone asked about using Excel or hand calculations. Um, you cannot use Excel. Um, and, and it isn't because I'm trying to be mean that, you know, you might be, you're familiar with Excel and, um, uh, you know, you can't use that. It's because the state requires that I teach you a statistical program um, equivalent to SPSS, and that is what JASP is. I haven't required you to use SPSS because that, there's a fee to that. So I'm offering a free version and JASP and SPSS are very equivalent. Excel is not. So you cannot use Excel during the test because you can't go off the screen. And so I do expect you to do things either by hand or with JASP. Now I'm not going to ask you to um, do really hard time uh, consuming number crunching because um, I'm assuming you know how to do that. I would rather you use application. So um, I wouldn't worry so much about, I, I know that a standard deviation calculation can be typed quite time consuming, especially if I give you like a hundred numbers. I'm not going to do that. If I give it to you, it'll maybe be four numbers um, and I expect you to do it by hand. Or um, more likely is the case is that I, I give you four numbers and then I say, what is most likely the standard deviation? And you could use theory to, you know, let's say the numbers span one, three, four, four, and then my questions say, what is the standard deviation? And they're all numbers like 100, 15, 36, and then one of them says 2.1. Like, oh wow, 2.1 sounds a little bit more reasonable than 100. So um, I am very much in favor of rewarding you for thinking and for um, using power of deduction. You can calculate it by hand if you want, but most often cases the answer should jump out at you. Okay, um, someone asked about using their iPad during the exam because they take notes on the iPad. So like I said, you can't use any digital devices, no cell phone, no iPad, no other computers, no browser. So that means that um, you're going to have to print those things up or um, make manual notes from the notes that you have on your iPad. Even if you say that you're going to turn the Wi-Fi off or whatever, no digital devices are allowed. So keep that in mind. Um, somebody asked about, can you use uh, the book? So yes, so again, anything printed that you want. Um, I don't care, it could be our book, it could be 10 books. Everything that's printed is allowed. Okay, and then somebody was asking about how I grade the open-ended questions because they're nervous about that. And I want you to know that you're not the only one who's nervous about that. This is a stats test and it's the first one you have with me. So there's a lot of unknowns. What I'd like you to know is that I grade them objectively. I grade each question one at a time without knowing who you are. So let's say uh, question five is an open-ended question. I guess she's done. Um, then I just grade everybody on question five before I move on to question six. And again, I don't look at your name. So I, I grade as objectively as possible. If you're afraid that you're not getting it right, give me as much information as you can. I will, I'm a big fan of partial credit. You demonstrating to me that you understand it, but maybe got hung up on a piece is good. So if you're worried about a short answer question, do as much as you can. Now, some of the questions that are short answer are like might say fill in a number and there's not much you can do explaining a number, but if I give you an open box to explain something and you, if you can explain it in one sentence and you got it, great. If you feel like you need to keep going because you're not sure you quite got it, that's fine. I'll look for what I'm uh, needing. If you say something wrong, be careful because I will have to assess that. But um, I usually find that students feel more comfortable realizing that I'm gonna read the whole thing and, and try to pull out the piece that I'm looking for if you're not quite there. All right, so let me just run through this list before I go on to the next one. Somebody asked if I could run through these examples again, but not have a lot of commentary in the video because apparently I have a lot of commentary. Moving forward in my examples, I will try to limit my commentary, but I can't promise anything because as an educator, commentary is kind of where I live. So not sure I can do that. Um, some people did ask for specific examples, so they said, can you give me more examples of this? Or they said, uh, you know, here's a specific, 
particular example I'd like to see. So what I'm going to say to those is I'll be sending out some more videos based on the requests I received. Um, but I do encourage you to come to my office hours. I have five hours of office hours before the exam, and I also can meet um, independently if, you, if those times don't work for you. So if you're needing specific examples, I, I kind of encourage you to come see me. Um, but I will try to send out more, especially Z distribution questions. Those seem to be where the focus of concern is. Um, somebody asked for a review of everything. I don't think I will be able to do that. Um, but if you come to office hours and we want to just kind of go over the main points of what I want you to learn and what I wanted you to take away, that works. Uh, again, I have two hours of office hours in the evening right before the test. So that's kind of a great review session time. Um, somebody had a concern about Proctorio. Is it safe? I, can, I feel like we've already addressed this early on. So go back and check those announcements that I'm, you know, Proctorio has been vetted by state standards and it meets a lot of the security needs for your um, personal information. So if you have questions, you can reach out to me specifically, but um, I'm moving forward with Proctorio. I feel safe with Proctorio and I'm not going to really uh, bend on that one. Okay, so now let me get into some specific questions that I feel like can be addressed in this video. How do you know when to use the B or the C column in the Z table? So my best tip for you is make sure you draw the distribution and put everything in there that you know. So if you're drawing and you say the upper 10%, shade in the upper 10, then calculate what do you know that's the rest. The rest would be 90%. And you also know that there's 50% from the middle on, so that means there's 10, 40, 50. Now you've drawn everything you know. Now you can think about what you want to look up. So that's my first tip is that to draw, 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 and take the time to meticulously draw what you know. Now, when it comes to the B column or the C column at all, depends on your drawing and what you know and what you don't know. But here's a tip, um, and it kind of looks like a dance. But the B column is in the middle, the C column is on the end, right? So the C column is always on the end pieces and the B column is in the middle. So you can kind of think like, da -na 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 -na. the B column is in the middle and the C column is on the end. Da -da 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 -da. Okay, so remember, B column is all the stuff that's in the middle, C column is all the stuff that's on the end. Some, one student asked, and I think I could address it quickly, but they said, hey, the question was the top 10% of the distribution, but why did you look up 40? And again, that goes back to this idea of drawing what I know. So if I'm drawing the top 10% of a distribution, that means that there's 40% from that line to the middle, right? Because if you take a distribution and split it in half, there's 50% on this side and 50% on this side. So if I take 10% of one of those sides, that leaves 40% left in that half. So I looked up 40%. But if you looked up the top 10%, you'll get the same exact z-score. So you do what works best for you. So in my examples, I often employ, employ different approaches just so people can see there's lots of ways to answer the same question. How do we know the difference between inferential and descriptive? Oh, it's so, it can be challenging, but what I want to point out is that Sometimes students think if there are um, statistics involved, it's descriptive, and that isn't the case. Statistics are involved in both descriptive and inferential. So let's say that, um, uh, I, here's an example. Okay, I'm gonna try to do something um, coronavirus related. So let's say that um, they reported that of all of the people who took any of the vaccines, there's three of them, right? Moderna, Pfizer, and Johnson & Johnson. That anybody who took three of the vaccines, that there were no deaths from coronavirus after taking either of those three vaccines. That is descriptive because they're saying of all the people who took the vaccine, not a single one of them died. So they're considering the entire population. Now, let's say they said, <laughs> Of those who took, uh, now this one is a statistic I'm making up because I can't think of the number off the top of my head, but of those who took the Pfizer vaccine, 51% uh, of them um, had soreness of the arm. That's descriptive because they're talking about all the people who had the Pfizer vaccine, 51% of them had uh, soreness of the arm. Here's where it gets inferential and notice the subtle difference. So if you're going to get the Pfizer vaccine, there's a 50% likelihood that you're going to have a sore arm. Okay, here's another one that's inferential. Uh, the studies on Moderna showed 
that some people got headaches. So therefore, there's a strong likelihood that people who are getting the Moderna vaccine are getting headaches. See, I'm taking the actual study and then trying to talk about it outside of the study. If you say no one in this group of all the people that I'm interested in uh, um, died or went to the hospital, then that's talking about that group. But then saying, that would be descriptive, right? Nobody who took these vaccines died. So that means that of all the people vaccinated now, we should expect no deaths. I'm taking my data and I'm inferring it out larger. So inferential is when you're taking statistics that you've collected on a subset and inferring out what that means. Um, so if that isn't what you needed to make that one click, reach out to me. Um, a population versus a sample. So um, people were asking how you know the difference between the population and the sample, and then also um, how do you know which formula to use? So here's the gist. Most of the time we're gonna be using the sample because it's very rare that we have access to an entire population. So if you're not sure, then you should probably assume it's sample, but it would be erroneous for me as a professor to say calculate the standard deviation and I don't tell you if it's the population or the sample. I have to tell you because it's gonna change your calculations. So most likely I will tell you whether it's a sample or a population, either in the story or just with a quick word. Um, but if I don't, which is rare, then it's safe to assume it's a sample because it's very rare for us to measure the entire population. Now the only time I ever run population statistics is when I'm going to assess how the class did in the, in, on the exam. So I might say that the mean for the class was 75% with a standard deviation of 12. When I say that, I'm saying standard deviation of the population because you are the world that I'm interested in. I'm not trying to infer out to other classes. Uh, when I run the statistics on your test, it will be just you. So I'm calculating a population standard deviation when I do that. But that's the only time Really, most often we are running on the sample and um, because that's all we have access to. So if I ask you to calculate something, I will have to tell you whether it's a population or sample. If I tell you a story and ask you to determine whether it's population or sample, what I really want you to think about is, has, um, have I measured everyone? Has the person telling the story measured everyone? Then it's the population. If they've measured most people, but not everyone, it's a sample. So uh, that would be the determining factor there. So someone was asking about, they understood why the z-score distribution uh, had a mean of zero, but they weren't clear why the standard deviation was one. And what I can say, and please reach out to me independently if this doesn't work, but we made it that way. So we set the standard deviation to, uh, the mean of standard deviations to be zero because we wanted to say, how much did you deviate from the average? Well, if you didn't deviate from the average, it should be zero. So the mean is zero because you didn't deviate from the average. And then we decided that each standard deviation unit will be the standard deviation units of the raw score. So let's say we're talking about exam scores and we say the mean is 75 and the standard deviation is 10. Um, then that, if somebody has a, their score is 75, then their z-score will be zero because they did not deviate from the mean. Let's say somebody had a score of 85, then I can say, wow, you were exactly one standard deviation above the mean. The standard deviation of the raw scores was 10. You got an 85. The mean was 75. That means you were actually one standard deviation above the mean. And we're going to set that one to be a z-score. So uh, the reason the z-score standard deviation is always one is because we purposely made it that way. So hopefully that addresses that question. Let me see if there's any others in here. Um, so I don't see any more. So I did see some questions that asked specific. So I do, again, I ask you to go back and look at the homework and see what the feedback did for you. And then I will be sending out more videos of practice um, di distribution questions. There's also the practice, pra practice exam for you to try if you'd like to see how you're doing. Um, if you do send me uh, individual questions, which I encourage, 
please send me a screenshot of the work you've done so far and then I will draw on it and tell you where you went wrong. Um, so that's can, that speeds up the process. Uh, an email that says, hey, I need help on number 12. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to reply back to you and say, what have you done so far? I'm not going to know exactly where, what kind of help you need. So to give you uh, more of me, give me as much information as you can in your email and I'll reply with specifics. All right, so I hope to see you on Sunday from 7 to 9 in my office hours. And if you can't make it, uh, send me your questions or I see you uh, Monday morning. All right, good luck studying. Keep warm.